there are a number of objectives we hope to achieve uh, by showing this case study. The first of which is to highlight the advantages of using intravascular ultrasound for the treatment of distal left mainstem bifurcation stenosis. We also hope to learn about the challenges in treating distal left main stems and the impact of stent design in achieving a good outcome for our patients. We also hope to learn how to use the clot technique for the treatment of distal left main bifurcation stenosis. This is a case of an 82 year old man who presented acutely with chest pain. He had some lateral ECG changes and troponin of a thousand indicating a lateral non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He required intravenous GTN to settle his pain and a transthoracic echo showed that he had good LV function with no wall motion abnormality. The gentleman has quite an extensive past history uh, in that he had angina in 2006 requiring a bare metal stent implanted into his right coronary artery. He also has a history of long-term steroid use for polymyalgia rheumatica and it also has a history of anemia with a haemoglobin of 121. Of significant note, he had a previous ischemic small bowel resection due to ophophilus. This gentleman's angiogram was undertaken from the right radial approach. And you can see here on the spider view, he has a tight distal calcified left main stem bifurcation stenosis. He also has severe disease in the obtuse marginal branch of the left circumflex. On the iliocranial view here, you can see there is severe disease in the proximal LED in addition. And there's a large first diagonal branch uh, coming off, which looks relatively free of disease. On the REO caudal view, you can see that the distal left main stem bifurcation stenosis is truly a Medina 111 uh, stenosis. Given the appearances on the coronary angiogram, we arrange for this patient to be reviewed by a cardiac surgeon with a view to coronary artery bypass grafting. Uh, he was ultimately, however, turned down for surgery, given that he's an 82 year old man. Uh, the mid vessel of the LED appears to be at the section of myocardial bridge. Uh, he is anemic, he's on long term uh, oral steroid therapy, and also given that he has a history uh, of ischemic bowel requiring resection. So, given that the patient has been turned down for coronary artery bypass grafting, we elected to perform percutaneous coronary intervention. Here, we've taken an EBU 3.5 guide catheter and we've placed wires in both the LED and into the obtuse marginal arteries. Uh, the first step we performed here was to pre-dilate uh, both limbs prior to intravascular imaging. Uh, we performed this using a 2.5 millimeter non-compliant emerged balloon given the calcified nature of the disease. Pre-dilation allowed us to pass an, an Opticross 40 megahertz IVUS catheter into the left circumflex and obtuse marginal arteries. And you can see here on the pullback, there's some disease within the obtuse marginal, which is calcified at 3 o'clock, uh, or between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Uh, and then there's an area of relative little disease. And then as you get closer towards the left main stem, you can see there's quite a, a large crescentic area of calcification from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Uh, and uh, the vessel at this point is around 3 millimetres in diameter. As we get closer to the left main stem, you can see the wire of the LED coming in at 12 o'clock. You can see there is nut and ring circumferential calcification of the distal left main stem. As we come back into the mid left main stem, there's still some eccentric calcification and no really nice landing zone within the left main uh, for a stent. So we've now passed the, the IVUS catheter down the left anterior descending coronary artery. You can see here in the proximal vessel uh, there is some calcification between 1 and 3 o'clock. And as we come more proximally in the vessel, you'll see that the calcification then extends circumferentially. 
uh, and you have almost napkin ring calcification there in the proximal vessel which is severely stenosed. Eccentric calcified plaque here as we, we come back towards the left main stem. Now you can see the wire at 6 o'clock in the circumflex artery, uh, and as we come into the distal left main stem, as we, we can see, as we saw on the previous IVUS, uh, circumferential tight calcification uh, of the distal left main stem. So given the appearances on the, the coronary ivus, uh, we've elected to treat this disease using the clot technique. Uh, these are the five steps that we're going to go through now. The first step in the clot technique is to ensure adequate lesion preparation prior to deploying any stents. Given the calcified nature of the disease seen on the ivus, we've chosen a 3mm cutting balloon here to predilate both the proximal left circumflex and the left anterior descending coronary arteries back into the left main stem. The second step in the clot technique is to deploy uh, a stent within the side branch uh, back into the left main stem. Here we've chosen to use the Synergy 3x38 mm drug looting stent extending from the obtuse marginal back all the way into the left main stem. Uh, we've chosen the Synergy stent here as it has excellent visualisation from its platinum chromium alloy. It has thin struts. Uh, there is a bioabsorbable polymer which will allow early healing. And also the, the, the Synergy stent has excellent overexpansion capabilities. After we've deployed the side branch stent, we need to perform a proximal optimization uh, prior to uh, treating the main branch. Here we've used a 4mm non-compliant emerge balloon within the left main stem uh, to ensure that the stent struts are fully expanded. You can see here in the, a model of a Synergy stent implant uh, that once you've deployed the, the stent from the side branch into the main vessel, the actual view uh, from the LED to the left main stem, you can see the crowns of the stents and the connector and you can just see how the, the, they can be quite challenging sometimes. Uh, to recross into the main vessel. The advantage of the, the Synergy stent here is that there are only two connectors as opposed to three, uh, which is the most conventional stents, and therefore this facilitates the easy passage of wires and balloons and stents. The third step in the clot technique is to recross uh, into the main branch and then dilate. You can see here uh, we're recrossing through the side wall uh, of the uh, obtuse marginal stent uh, and you can see that having less connectors is advantageous in this circumstance and that the connectors often obstruct the side branch and they can be catching points for your wire, balloons or stents. Uh, unfortunately when we're deploying side branch stents we've got absolutely uh, no control over where the connectors are going to be positioned. Having wired the main branch we then encountered great difficulty and trying to get any balloons uh, to cross from the left main stem into the LED. We actually had to employ an anchor balloon technique in order for us to pass any balloons at all and open the struts into the LED. Uh, an anchor balloon technique here, we used a 3mm balloon uh, within the left circumflex stent and when this was deployed at 14 atmospheres 
Uh, this gave us the ability to push uh, a small 1.5mm balloon across the, the left main stem into the LED. We then serially pre-dilated up to a 3mm non-compliant balloon. Unfortunately, despite this, no stent would cross and we therefore had to rewire through a different strut uh, from the left main stem into the LED to allow stent passage. This possibly highlights that there was a connector obstructing the lumen, uh, limiting the, the, the passage of a stent into the LED. Going back to our bench model images, you can see here uh, how we use a balloon through the side wall of the, the stent uh, in order to create space uh, for stent passage. And you can see how big a hole uh, the balloon makes in the side wall of the stent of these images. You can see in the top right hand image here uh, the view down the LED towards the left main stem and you can see the crowns of the Synergy stent and the connector in the middle of the view. Following dilation, recrossing dilation of the, the side wall of the stent you can see exactly how, how big a hole we've created in order to allow our stents to pass. We then deployed a Synergy 2.5x24mm stent within the, the mid LED extending back uh, towards the first diagonal branch. The fourth step in the clock procedure is then to deploy the stent uh, within the main branch and here we're obviously coming back to the left main stem osteum as we couldn't really see a good landing zone on the IVIS imaging uh, within the body of the left main stem. We obviously have to ensure here that we have overlap uh, with the stent that we've just deployed within the LED and that we extend back covering the osteum. The stent was deployed uh, with a good initial angiographic result, as shown here. Going back to our bench model images, you can see here uh, the excellent lesion coverage you get from performing a clot technique uh, with stent struts extending uh, into the carina and double layer of stents within the proximal main branch. You can see here that we've now shifted the problem of connectors and crowns obstructing the lumen to the side branch. Uh, we now have to wire the side branch as we did for the, the main vessel uh, through the side wall of the main branch stent. At this point we post dilated uh, the LED stent using a 3mm non-compliant emerge balloon to 20 atmospheres. The fifth step in the clock procedure is to perform a final kissing balloon inflation and a proximal optimization within the left main stem. Here we've done a final kissing balloon inflation using two 3.5 x 12mm non-compliant emerge balloons which were deployed simultaneously at 12 atmospheres. This can be seen here on the left hand image. On the right hand image we've performed a proximal optimization. On the bench model you can see here we have the two balloons uh, within the left main stem and into both branches and then on the right hand side uh, the proximal optimization being performed. Following the final kissing balloon inflation, you can see here on the right hand image that the, the side branch crowns and connectors have been pushed to the side, and on the bottom image in the main branch again, there is no obstruction. We have now completed our procedure, and you can see the before and after images in this REO caudal view with excellent stent expansion extending all the way back to the ostium of the left main stem. On the REO cranial view, you can see the excellent stent expansion within the proximal LED, and you can see that beyond the stent, uh, there is quite a pronounced myocardial bridge. There has been some plaque shift into the first diagonal branch, uh, which you can see as well. Given the size and the importance of the first diagonal branch, we elected to interrogate uh, the significance of the plaque shift by using the comet pressure wire. Uh, using intravenous adenosine, we achieved maximal hyperemia, and the FFR was 0 0.87, which is well above the ischemic threshold, and therefore this branch uh, did not require any intervention. So I hope this case has demonstrated a number of advantages of using intravascular ultrasound uh, to plan the treatment of the distal left main stem bifurcation stenosis and that you're able to decide whether to use a, a, a one stent or a two stent strategy up front. IVIS also shows us how calcified the disease is 
and whether or not you're going to need a cutting balloon or even high speed rotational atherectomy uh, to treat the disease before stenting. The IVUS also shows us accurately the size of the different vessels and how big a stent to use and how, how far to post dilate these stents. We've also used the, the Synergy Platinum Chromium uh, Thin Strut Alloy with a bioabsorbable polymer uh, to treat the disease in this case and this provides excellent stent visibility and early vessel healing which are important uh, factors when treating left main stem bifurcation disease. Uh, the Synergy stent has a two connector design which makes access to the side branch easier uh, and it also has some excellent over expansion properties in that you're able to take the 4mm stent up to 5.75mm uh, with excellent radial strength. I hope we've also demonstrated that using the clot technique here to treat the distal left main stem bifurcation uh, ensures excellent lesion coverage and is a good technique uh, for this pattern of disease.